after studying this model you shall be able to know the link the symmetry properties of a molecule with group theory define a matrix define a matrix special types of matrix know how to add the matrices how to subtract the matrices how to multiply the matrices know the special properties of the binary operation of matrices and also able to know find the direct product of this matrix now in this module the symmetry operations which we have defined earlier now will be linked with the matrices group and its characteristics were discussed and scheme of classification of the molecules into point group explained in detail with the help of the flow chart and various examples now question arises how to make use of these symmetry properties of the molecule and group theory in solving complex spectroscopic chemical problems this can be achieved only when we find a procedure to link the symmetry properties of the molecules and mathematical mathematical properties that is group theory this can be achieved through matrix representation of a point group that is each and every symmetry operation of a point group can be represented by a matrix where a matrix forms the basis for representation these matrices behave very similar to symmetry operations just as various symmetry operation constitute a point group similarly matrices corresponding to each symmetry operation of the point group constitute a group all properties of symmetry operated operation thus can be reflected into their matrix representation now question arises how to represent the effects of symmetry operation on the molecules in mathematical form here matrix representation of symmetry operation comes to our rescue there are a number of theories in mathematics about matrix representation these theories can be used for solving chemical problems before finding matrix representation or dealing with the matrix representation for a point group it is very very necessary to know the basic of matrix algebra now here i will not go in much detail of the matrix algebra only some of the basic points which are must will be discussed over here first definition of a matrix it is a rectangular array of elements symbol or numbers which are arranged in rows and columns enclosed by square bracket different from determinant here we are using square brackets just like matrix a is shown into the where a11 a12 a1n these are the row elements then a11 a21 am1 are the column element of this matrix horizontal rows are called rows and vertical lines are called column dimension or size of a matrix means how many rows and how many columns are there in the matrix in matrix a there are m rows and n columns so the dimension of the matrix a is m into m and generally represented by this symbol of the matrix within square bracket is a m into n first subscript is for row and second subscript is for column now where row 1 elements in this matrix a are a11 a12 a1 n and column 1 elements are a11 a21 am1 the elements in the rows and columns are also known as the entries of the matrix 
in general each entry of the matrix can be written in a i j that is the element at the intersection of ith row and jth column now let us take some special type of matrices called common use only very few of these special matrix will be given here first is vector a vector matrix a vector is a matrix that has only one row or one column these are of two types row vector if matrix has only one row it is called row vector a1 a2 up to an column vector a matrix has only one column it is called column vector just like c1 c2 cn square matrix if the number of rows m of a matrix is equal to the number of column that is m is equal to n it is called square matrix matrix b below is a square matrix in a square matrix the element of the diagonal are called diagonal element here it is shown in between dotted lines and these are 1 5 and 8 then we come to the diagonal matrix a square matrix is one in which all entries of the diagonals are zero only the diagonal entries are non zero such as in the matrix c a i j r j zero i is not equal to j 3 2 5 are the diagonal element one or more or all the diagonal element entries can be zero identity matrix a diagonal matrix in which all diagonal elements are equal to 1 is called identity matrix it can be of any size a i j is equal to 0 i is not equal to j a i a is equal to 1 for all values of i identity can be denoted by identity matrix can be denoted by the symbol capital e or capital i let us come to another type of symmetric and asymmetric anti symmetric matrices square matrices for which a i j is equal to a j i for all values of i and j are called symmetric about the main diagonal or simply symmetric matrices and matrices for which a i j is not equal to a j i are called anti symmetric element these are shown into the over here both e and f e is symmetric and f is anti symmetric then let us go to the next transpose of a matrix the transpose of a matrix g of dimension mn is given denoted by a with this sign transpose of a matrix g can be obtained by changing its row into column to give g with this g transpose that is rows of g transpose transpose matrix are the column of g matrix and the rows of g matrix are the column of g transpose transpose matrix example below shows that g and its transpose g dash are given like this g 570104 if of 2 is to 3 dimension and g transpose 570104 3 to 10 now orthogonal matrices a square matrix is said to be orthogonal if it is when multiply by its transpose gives identity matrix i or e now let us take brief about matrix algebra to understand the application of matrices one must understand how these matrices are combined that is addition subtraction multiplication and a special way of division let us look at these characteristics matrix addition two matrices a and b can be added only if they are of the same size dimension addition is shown in the here a and b and gives us c elements 
corresponding elements of A are added to the corresponding elements of B. That is 5 plus 6, 2 plus 7, 3 plus minus 2. Like these are added and we get the corresponding elements. And that is given over here, 11, 9, 1 and like this. That is, it is a simple addition of corresponding elements. Metric subtraction. Two matrices A and B can be subtracted only if they are of the same size and subtraction is given by A matrix minus B matrix is equal to D matrix. Here A matrix minus B matrix is equal to C matrix which is given over here. A minus B is equal to minus C. Here corresponding entries are subtracted. 5 minus 6 is equal to minus 1, 2 minus 7 is equal to minus 5, 3 minus 2 is equal to 5. Like this, all these entries can be obtained in this case. Now let us take matrix multiplication. Two matrices A and B can be multiplied only if the number of columns of A is equal to the number of rows of B. That is, these should be confirmable. A of dimension M into P, B of dimension P into N can be multiplied to give the matrix C of dimension N into M. So these should be confirmable. Without that, we cannot. It is shown we are having A of 2 is to 3 dimension and B of 3 is to 2 dimension. And these are combined as shown. Uh, here it is. We pick up the rows of A, that is row number 1, 5, 2 and 3 and take the column of B and just see we multiply each and every element of the first row with the column of the second and these are added in this 5 into 3 plus 2 into 5 plus 3 into 9. Like this we get the entries of matrix C, C11, C12. C21, C22. Again, I am saying take the row of the first, mul multiply with the entries of the column of the second. And like this, you get this. And we get the actual multiplication matrix C, which is shown over here 52 minus 56, 76 minus 88. Again, take the row of the first. Multiply with the column of the second, get the symmetry elements of the, get the, sorry, get the entries of the C. Division of matrices will not be discussed as it is not very straightforward and it will be not needed in over it. Some more characteristics of binary matrix operation. Commutative law of addition. If A and B matrices are of dimensions 1 into N, then matrix A plus matrix B is equal to matrix B plus matrix A is true. Associative law of additions. If A, B and C matrices are of M is to N dimension, then matrix A plus matrix B plus matrix C is equal to matrix A plus the sum of matrix B and C is equal to the sum of matrix A plus matrix B then matrix C. Associative law of multiplication. If matrix A, B and C are of dimension M into N, N into P, P into Q dimension respectively then A matrix A multiplied by the B multiplied by C is equal to matrix A multiplied with the product of matrix B and C is equal to matrix product of A and B multiplied with matrix C is valid provided the order of multiplication is not changed. Distributive law. If A and B matrices are of M into N dimension and C and D are of N is to P dimension, 
and then a multiply by c plus d is equal to ac plus ad a plus b multiplied by c is equal to ac plus bc are valid and resulting matrix will be of m is to p dimensions and the results are it can be easily checked that this law is true now is ab is equal to ba if product of ab exist then number of columns of a must be equal to the number of the rows of the b if ba exist then the number of columns of b must be equal to the number of rows of a now for ab is equal to ba the resulting matrices from a ab and ba have to be of the same size this is possible only when a and b are square matrices and are of the same size even then in general ab is not equal to ba product of now for ab is equal to ba the resulting matrices from ab and ba have to be of the same size this is possible only when a and b are square matrices and are of the same size even then in general ab is not equal to ba product of matrices in general is non commutative in nature these are shown and it can be easily verified that ab and ba are not the same now if a not equal to 0 b is not equal to 0 ab may be 0 and bb ba may not be 0 this can be verified as shown vectors and operators will not be discussed in this modules now let us take another important property direct product of matrices direct product or kronecker product of matrices finds application in quantum chemistry and group theory if a matrix is of n into n dimension and b is the matrix of m into m dimension then direct product is defined as nm into nm matrix that is a direct product of b is equal to c here symbol c which is shown over here is not a is a standard notation for direct product it is not a sign of simple multiplication or addition it is a way in which the elements of a and b have been combined taken the direct product it is shown over here by taking the example of a and b that is elements of a are multiplied each and every element of a are multiplied with each and every element of the b as shown in this and we get the matrices of this dimensions just it has been explained by taking a 4 3 2 1 and then 3 1 2 1 and we get the entries as 4 into 4 types now let us try to understand the direct product between two matrix let us say a and b and let it be equal to c notice that here this particular symbol is a standard notation for the direct product and it is not a sign of simple multiplication which in turn is represented by this symbol so you can notice the difference between these two symbols that is this is the direct product and this is the simple sign of multiplication now let us try to understand this with let us say the matrix a is having these two columns and two rows and these are the elements similarly let us say that the matrix b is represented by this and these are the elements that is b11 b12 b21 and b22 so this is also a 2 by 2 matrix now if we have to find out the direct product between a and b what we will do is that is we can say that a with this is the symbol for direct product with b 
will be given by we can rewrite that is it will be this multiplied by this and let us try to understand how this will be done so we have these two matrices multiple being directly and the direct product of these two will be we take this matrix and we say that it is being multiplied by this and this is being represented in term of this so what we have to do we have to take each element of a and multiply it with b so this can be written as that a11 multiplied by b similarly you can have a12 multiplied by b a21 multiplied by b and a22 multiplied by b so we take this earlier expression and we expand this that is the direct product of a and b will be it is a11 with in place of this matrix b you will have b11 b12 b21 and b22 that is what we have done is with a11 we have multiplied the entire matrix b so this comes in this position further it will be we take the next term which is a12 into matrix b and how that will be expanded it is a12 let us write it this way and for b matrix now here this will be multiplied by b11 b12 b21 and b22 now similarly when we take this term a21 so it will be a21 let us write it four times and we have to multiply it by this entire matrix b so we will write b11 here b12 here b21 and b22 and now I think it's very obvious how we'll be expanding this term that is a22 into the matrix b we write a22 at these places and it is being multiplied by b11 b12 b21 and b22 so what we get is you can see this is the matrix which is the direct product of a into b and notice that both a as well as b were 2 by 2 matrix and what you have got is the product matrix and what you have got as the direct product matrix of a and b is you are having 1 2 3 4 and similarly for here so it is a 4 by 4 matrix now let us try to take an example to find out the direct product and let us take that we are given that a is 4 3 2 1 this is the 2 by 2 matrix and another matrix given b is 3 1 2 1 so now in this case the direct product that is a and this is the direct product symbol with b will be given by what we have to do is we have to take this first element of a that is from the first column and first row and we write it at these four places and what we'll do is we'll take all these elements of b and write in respective places that is this 4 into 
3 4 into 1 it is coming from this position then 2 will come here and this one will come here now let us take this element which is 3 for the matrix A so we write 3 here we write 3 here here and here and now this is being multiplied by all these 4 1 by 1 that is 3 multiplied by 3 3 multiplied by 1 3 multiplied by 2 and 3 multiplied by 1 similarly we now take this particular element of the matrix A it is 2 and we write 2 at these four places and what we'll do is we'll multiply by 3 then 1 then 2 and then 1 in these respective places that is what we get is 2 multiplied by 3 2 multiplied by 1 2 multiplied by 2 and 2 multiplied by 1 now similarly taking this element which is the second row and second column element for matrix A we will write this here 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 and here and we will take these four elements of matrix B and multiply them here that is 1 multiplied by 3 1 multiplied by 1 1 multiplied by 2 and 1 multiplied by 1 and this is the 4 by 4 matrix that we have obtained that is you can clearly solve it further so what we get you can clearly see is now 4 into 3 you get 12 here 4 into 1 you get 4 here 9 here 3 in place of this then 8 4 6 3 6 2 3 1 4 2 2 and 1 so what you can see is this is the direct product between the matrix A and B that we had taken which were 2 by 2 matrix each and the product is a 4 by 4 matrix. After studying this model we have come now need what is the need for matrix representation it has been stressed over here matrix has been defined and explained only some special type of matrices were discussed matrix algebra with special reference to addition, subtraction, and multiplication has been discussed. Some special characteristics of binary operations of matrices have been mentioned. Without proof, how to find direct product of matrices has been explained by taking suitable example. And this type of properties will be very, very important when we deal in future with this matrix algebra.